As we have discussed in the previous videos, Megan and Harry's favorite mouthpiece, Omid Scoby, aka Scabies, aka Scooby Doo, is set to publish a new book about the royal family due out at the end of the month. It's called Endgame. And in Endgame, he discusses the relationship between William and Harry. He claims the relationship between the warring royals is broken beyond repair. That William's never going to forgive Harry for everything that he said about the family in Spare and in the docuseries. Harry, on the other hand, is still demanding an apology from his family for what we're still not sure. But according to Scooby-Doo in Endgame, Harry was basically left out in the cold when his grandmother passed away and his family didn't include him. So that could be what the apology is all about. Who knows? But anyway, today we're going to be looking at what Tom Sykes, the royal correspondent writing in the Daily Beast, has to say about this whole situation. He's got some information from friends of William's, and yeah, it doesn't look like this relationship is going to be fixed anytime soon. There's a lot happening right now in the world of the royals, because we've got the last season of The Crown coming out, and we've got all this news about Endgame coming out all at the same time. So Sykes talks about how there is a scene in The Crown that shows just how close the brothers once were, William and Harry. They used to be best friends. Back when their mother passed away, they were there for each other, they supported each other. When we remember how close the brothers used to be, it makes it all the more sad just how much their relationship has deteriorated in the past few years. For this piece, Sykes spoke with some friends of William's about Scooby-Doo's insights in Endgame. One old friend of William said when asked about the status of his relationship with Harry, he absolutely fucking hates him. Well, at least it doesn't sound like William is confused when it comes to his feelings towards his younger brother. And reportedly what William is most upset about is Harry's betrayal of the family. One friend said Harry sold his family out to the media for millions of dollars and William can't forgive that breach of trust. According to Sykes, William's resolute determination to have nothing further to do with his brother stands in stark contrast to his father's determination to try and reconcile with Harry. This is an interesting point that Sykes is making about the difference between William and his father, King Charles. King Charles has said over and over again that Harry is still his dear boy and that the door to Harry is always open. Now, supposedly, for King Charles' birthday, Harry and Meghan made a call. We're still not sure if the call even happened. And we're pretty sure the reports that the Invisible Children made a video of them singing Happy Birthday to send to the King is absolutely made up because, well, King Charles doesn't even have a cell phone. But the palace has not denied the reports that the phone call happened, so it is possible that they spoke on the King's birthday. As Sykes writes, neither Buckingham Palace nor Harry's office responded to queries from the Daily Beast about the alleged birthday phone call, but it is interesting that both sides appear not to be averse to letting it be known that relations are on the mend. Sykes also points out that this was a big change from what we were seeing the week before. The week before, we were seeing all these reports that Harry and Meghan first had declined an invitation to the King's birthday party, and then later on, we were hearing that Harry and Meghan were never invited at all, that Buckingham Palace simply didn't reach out to them. So it does look like there is something changing in the relationship between Harry and his father. But as far as the relationship between Harry and William, according to Sykes, there is nothing that's going to change there. Sykes reports, a friend of the king told the Daily Beast that there was nothing cynical about Charles's wish to build bridges with his son, and that he would be delighted about the renewal of contact with Harry. But the friend also said they doubted William would be minded to follow his father's example, saying, Charles has kept the door open to Harry. He has been very explicit about that, saying he loves him. That's what parents do. William doesn't have the same forgiving attitude. That dynamic is not unique in family arguments. A second friend of William's also spoke with the Daily Beast. Now, this friend used to be friends with Harry, but not anymore. And this friend said that they haven't had any contact with Harry since he left the country. They told the Daily Beast that there was zero prospect of a rapprochement between the two brothers, and that they believed the next time they were going to meet was going to be at a family funeral. The source shared, there are some relatives whose deaths would bring Harry and William together under one roof. But other than that, realistically, it's probably Charles' funeral. And if things stay as they are, which is basically mutual loathing, you would have to say William would be unlikely to invite Harry to his coronation. 
This friend claiming that William probably wouldn't even invite Harry to the coronation is big. I mean, even after everything Harry said in Spare in the docuseries, the king still invited him and presumably Meghan to the coronation. Of course, Harry attended alone, which made us doubt that Meghan was really invited. But Harry at least knew he had to show up for his father's coronation. That was such an important event. A birthday party is one thing, but a coronation is another matter entirely. The Daily Beast asked the friend for specific reasons why William has developed a loathing of the brother he was once so close to. And this friend also cited betrayal. They said, I think it's exactly because the bond was so deep that the betrayal has been so wounding. They were the only people who actually knew what each other had been through. How would you feel if your best friend decided to reveal all your personal secrets to the newspapers? Well, multiply that by a thousand. Harry is never going to apologize, at least not while he's married to Meghan, and William is never going to apologize either, so that's that. Since we've been getting these excerpts from Endgame, we're getting a clear picture about what exactly Harry wants William to apologize for. Most likely, Harry is wanting the family to apologize for the way he believes they left him out when his grandmother passed away. Harry claims that on the day his grandmother passed away, he sent his brother all these text messages, and his brother absolutely ignored him. Harry claims that he was trying to get a ride up to Scotland with William and his uncles, but that William completely blanked him. Now, already, some reports are emerging that that wasn't the whole story, that Harry was pitching a fit about Meghan coming along, and that caused William's plane to be delayed as well. I think I know who I'm going to believe in this, but whatever. In Endgame, Scooby-Doo is making it sound like the whole family all got together to make sure that Harry felt left out. Harry and Meghan are also denying that they had anything to do with the book, but as Sykes points out, it doesn't make a bit of sense. Sykes writes, Harry and Meghan have reportedly denied they briefed Scobie for his new book. However, the specificity of some detail. Scobie, for example, reported that Harry spent $37,000 to charter a plane in a vain effort to get to the Queen's bedside before she died. Make it clear that he has high-level sources inside the Sussex camp. Those with good memories will recall also that Megan denied having cooperated with Scobie's first book, Finding Freedom, but subsequently conceded to the High Court that her media team did indeed meet and brief Scobie. After Endgame hits shelves at the end of the month, it's going to be very interesting to watch and see if Megan and Harry backtrack on their claims that they were not involved, or if they just dig their heels in and insist that they were not the ones who gave Scobie this information. I agree with Sykes, though. There are too many details that he couldn't have gotten from anybody else. Who else would have access to these details? I think we're just going to see a repeat of what happened with Finding Freedom. Even if it wasn't Megan and Harry personally who spoke with Scobie, they authorized somebody to speak with them on their behalf. This time around, hopefully they won't lie in a courtroom about it. But one thing is clear. Their involvement in that book is going to do nothing to help the relationship between William and Harry. Sykes asked the friend of Williams if Scobie's book was likely to worsen relations, and the friend said, No, but only because you can't get lower than absolute zero. And you, what do you think of the relationship between William and Harry? Is there any way for the two brothers to make peace? Please let me know your opinion below in the comments section. If you found this video informative, please do like and share it with anybody else who would enjoy it too. And before you go, if you've not already, please support us more by clicking that subscribe button below. For Thank you so much for tuning in. Have a lovely day, and I'll be back to see you in the next videos.